Uh, Black has some of the 10 as well. Yo, thanks, boys. Thanks, boys. Thanks, guys. And I've uh, kids with the three. My uh, collection three gifties. grows. I saved you from home with one sub to flames peak. Ooh. I think Lost Ark's gonna do that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> one more new toy. For you, Yuki gifted a tier one sub to eat beast underscore. Okay, hang on, let me fix the cams, boys. There we go. Mine now. Eight minutes left. 100 gifted subs, by the way. God damn, Tavson as well. Thanks, boys. Mine now. Thanks, guys. Oh shit, look at me in the bottom left. You're beautiful. Mine now. Look at me in the bottom left. Uh, this is Vampire Survivors. I don't know how old it is. It just lots of people start playing it lately. Mine now. Pepe get credit. I don't know how old it is. So, do you have any predictions? Do you think Zana is evil? Uh, what's my bingo card say? I I, I think whatever the bingo card now. says. <laughs> Did you, are you gonna do the bingo card memes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. I got... Mine now. Oh. Dude, it's come such a long way. Mm-hmm. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. Thank you for joining us as we unveil Path of Exile's next big expansion, Siege of the Atlas. Since the Atlas of Worlds was introduced in 2016, we have released three large endgame expansions, each evolving Path of Exile's endgame in a different way. Today, I am proud to present our fourth endgame expansion, which launches on PC and Mac on February 4th, and on Xbox and PlayStation on February 9th. Unique and currency items you can earn by defeating the pinnacle bosses. Then we'll cover changes to how the Atlas works with its new game systems before revealing the Arch Nemesis Challenge League, which launches alongside Siege of the Atlas. After a summary of what game balance changes we're making in this expansion, we'll have a Q&A session where Ziggy D asks me questions from the community. Finally, we'll post the full patch notes as soon as the live stream ends. Let's check out the trailer for Siege of the Atlas. Cirrus is dead. Oh! <laughs> okay, dude. They are here. Yeah, they Stand are. with us. Or we will all perish. Wow. Wow. <sighs> uh. Path of Building's gonna cry. The events in Siege <laughs> of the Atlas take place after the defeat of Cirrus. Of the Atlas, you needed to use watchstones to both unlock new maps and raise the level of maps across your Atlas. This required grinding conquerors and managing the optimal placement of 16 different watchstones. In Siege of the Atlas, we've removed watchstones and have restored the hidden maps back to the base atlas so they don't have to be unlocked over time. We've added much of the power from craftable watchstones to atlas passives so that you can still access the benefits you're used to without the busy work of managing watchstones. Despite the era of watchstones being over, we do really like the ability to raise the tier of maps on your atlas so that eventually all of them are tier 16. To this end, we have introduced void stones. You can earn up to four of these one each from the Uber Elder, the Maven, the Searing Exarch, and the Eater of Worlds. Placing Void Stones on your Atlas will raise the tier of all of its maps, eventually making them uniformly tier 16. Much value, unless it was a certain base type at a specific item level. Influenced items were generally not that useful in early, mid, or even most high-end maps, as they were basically a post-end game feature. Our new system of Eldritch Implicits allows you to apply Eldritch mods to already good items that you have, so that you have a lot more freedom to choose how you create your best items. You can also start interacting with Eldritch Implicits much earlier in your mapping experience. 
As you know, Path of Exile items can have an implicit mod that either comes built into the item based on what type it is, or can be modified with systems such as Vile Corruption. Eldritch Implicits replace existing implicit mods, but with a twist. An item is allowed to have one Eldritch Implicit from the Searing Exarch and one from the Eater of Worlds at the same time. These Implicits have many different tiers and several ways to interact with them. These now apply to all map drops on the Atlas, rather than affecting map drops in just one region. Each slot provides a 10 times multiplier to how frequently its corresponding map drops, relative to other maps. You can select 12 different maps as your favorite maps, or you can put the same map type in all 12 slots for a massive 120 times boost to its occurrence in your drop pool. This is particularly powerful once you've socketed all Power. four Voidstones into hey, your atlas, no. making all of your maps tier 16, and with a 120 times multiplier applied to a specific map. In this case, the specific map you have chosen will constitute <laughs> over 50% of all tier 16 map drops. ...modifiers on them, depending on which maps they were running. We like the strategic use of sextants, so we have reintroduced this behavior with a new currency item called the Surveyor's Compass. This can be applied to a void stone with a sextant mod on it to itemize that sextant mod for later use or trade. This currency item drops periodically and is also sold by Kirik for one Chaos Orb, similar to how Einhaus sells Beastery Orbs. There's no limit on how many you can purchase. Wow. With Zana gone, you may be wondering what is happening to her Atlas missions. Well, yeah. Kirik is taking over from her, but it works a little differently now. Removal of the favor system, this stopped mattering. Instead of focusing on completion, Kirik missions now focus more on rewards, and so their purpose is to provide you with additional league content or extra item drops. Instead of your free daily mission being based on the last map you've completed, it's now based on the highest tier map you've completed in this current league. For example, if you completed a tier 16 map, your daily missions will always be high tier maps. Kirik missions can now include additional content like conquerors, ritual encounters, expedition encounters, and even monstrous treasure, the former prophecy that makes an area contain 24 to 36 additional strongboxes with no natural monster inhabitants. Upon defeating the map boss, a portal will open to the conqueror's arena. Upon death, the Conqueror will drop a fragment. Each Conqueror has their own fragment. Combine all four fragments in your map device to open a set of portals to the Cirrus and Hello, thick. As it's now harder to get influenced items, we've moved plus level gem modifiers into the global mod pool for amulets. So it's now possible to get the powerful plus two levels to certain gems without having to use influenced amulets. Wow. Now I'm identifying Cirrus and the every Conqueror amulet. Are no longer core parts of Atlas gameplay. They will not drop awakened gems. These gems can now drop from Maven invitations. Arch wow. Nemesis is a challenge league that reinvigorates fights with rare wow. monsters. It introduces around 60 new monster mods and allows you to customize your rare boss fights to control your level of risk and reward. More than four possible locations where you may encounter petrified monsters in each area, but only the first four you encounter can be empowered and fought. Arch Nemesis mods cannot be traded with other players. Your progress is your own. We designed this league to be a relatively simple one to go alongside all of the new Atlas content in this expansion, and it exceeded our expectations. The fights are fun, the rewards are punchy, and there are a lot of tough decisions about which reward combinations or recipes you can pursue. In Siege of the Atlas, our balance goal is to take two very common gameplay archetypes that struggle with endgame content and two new types of stash tap one for flasks and one for gems. A side effect of this is that you're able to set your regular tabs to have affinity for flasks or gems, regardless of whether you've purchased the new specialized tabs. The gem stash tab allows you to easily store and sort your collection of up to 500 skill and support gems. By default, it displays all gems stored in the tab, but you can use one Fuck of the it. four categories at the top to filter between red, green, blue, and white gems. There's a dropdown that allows you to pick your preferred sorting method, such as current gem level, required level, or quality, to easily find whatever gem you're looking for. The flask stash tab allows you to store 500 flasks and can be filtered to show life, mana, hybrid, utility, and unique flasks. You can also use the dropdown to That's change really the sort order between item level, base type, and quality. This allows you to quickly find flasks of a certain type, potential flasks to vendor for glassblower's baubles, or high item level flasks for crafting. Remember that regardless of whether you've purchased these new tabs, you'll still be able to set up affinities for gems or flasks on your existing stash tabs. And flasks? Hmm. Alongside the launch of Siege of the Atlas, we are hosting a competitive event where players will race to be the first to kill a trio of bosses, the Maven, the Searing Exarch, and the Eater of Worlds. 
The event will take place in the Hardcore Solar Cell Found Arch Nemesis League. We have some interesting prizes in store for the winners. Keep an eye on the news next week for more details about how this event will work and what its prizes are. Bog? We're almost at the Q&A, but first I'd like to show you the new supporter packs we're releasing today to help fund development of future Path of Exile expansions. Our new packs are called the Worm and Ember Keep supporter packs. Run potentially. Yeah, the Conqueror stuff is pretty optional. Um, that's a, a good follow-up then. Not, li not Lime, this asks, can we witness Conquerors? In all caps, by the way, they're excited about this. Caps, can we witness Conquerors? <laughs> yeah. You can. You can? Oh, okay, that's interesting. So that means potentially a new uh, Conqueror boss fight then. Gauntlet! Ooh, ooh, okay. Um, what happens to the unique watchstones, Nobus asks. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure we just eradicated. Um, and, yeah. All watchstones are gone. <laughs> so that, uh, that, that strips a couple of things from Cyrus as well. Is there any, like, buff to Cyrus or some yeah. of the other bosses? I think there's also, that. yesterday we had this conversation, in fact, I shouldn't be saying stuff like this, we were reading, we were reading <laughs> some on. drafts of questions that we may be asked, right, you know, doing our prep for this, and we get to this exact point of what are we doing about Maven rewards with regard to, you know, is the Awakened gem sufficient, and then we decided to buff a bunch of Maven uniques, so yes, to, to get to your exact point that the Maven rewards were underwhelming, um, there are buffs to those, which were added literally at the last minute in the patch notes. Like the patch notes were approved and done and sent to translators and the formatting is ready and we're good and we're celebrating. And then someone says, we need to buff these uniques so everyone gets writing again. <laughs> and so um, I hope that actually happens. Yeah. Oh, that's very good news if so. I hope so too. I'd like to see some uh, spicy chase there for sure.